Good day ladies and gentlemen, I'm Totally the Toad and I'm back with another video. And this video was, well it was inspired by Vanilla Thana. I think many of us start that way. So in 2022 I made a jacket which I wore once, maybe twice. And I realised there were so many issues with it that I just ended up never wearing it. And it is this jacket. Yeah, I know, I only have this picture of it because I didn't take any pictures of it because I wasn't happy with it. And to make the jacket I used this pattern by Black Sands Pattern, um, which I modified the sleeves of instantaneously because I didn't get them to work and I realised that, so I changed the sleeves still didn't like it and then I looked at this video by Bernadette Banner in which she sort of revives a coat that she had made and I thought maybe I could do that maybe this jacket can be saved so can I fix the jacket we shall see I made a list on an envelope of stuff that I didn't like with the jacket and uh, I'll go through them with you real quick. So first up, the lining. As I said, I only wore the jacket once or twice and the lining is already broken. It broke instantly and a lot. Also, somehow I made it really bubbly at the bottom of the hem, which is not nice at all. We also have the closure. Now, not only is it crooked, it also gapes and the skirt in its original form, before I realised I wanted to do this, had some weird issues with the skirt portion which meant that there was no real overlap at the front of the skirt which meant it sort of gapes a lot and I've tried to fix this already. Um, We'll see if I can fix it better, but as you can see, I have started a little bit already here. <laughs> we'll see. We also have the lapels. I mean, the white part of the lapels are not that bad, but the color itself, it just don't sit right. It keeps popping up in weird ways it really shouldn't, and it makes it look very unprofessionally made. Which it is, but it shouldn't look like it. And lastly, we have the overall fit. Now, if you can look here, there's like a very big wrinkle forming at the back. And me and my friends, we talked about it at some time and realized that it's probably because the waistline is too low on me. I have a very short torso, so this tends to happen. But yes, it happened a lot. So I want to fix the collar, the lapel, the lining, the waistline, and the overall fit of the jacket. Can I do it? Let's find out. Let's get into it, shall we? I have now removed the entire lining and the sleeves. I didn't mean to remove the sleeves, but the lining and the sleeves were sewn with the same thread, so I kind of had to. And this is what we've got. This here is, I've used as interlining, and in the pattern it says that you can use like a mid-weight to heavy linen and this is linen but it's not particularly sturdy I think this is way too floppy um, I was surprised to see that I have done pad stitching in the lapel and in the collar so that's nice and I also have this twill tape nice so I think that the biggest issue here is that it's so flimsy, it's not strong enough really. And what we would need is this Horsehead canvas and a friend of mine uh, kindly offered me some. <laughs> and then I need to figure out how to do this bendy bit here at the end because it gets very dense and I think that's what makes it look not as crisp. So I'll see if I can figure out what to do with that. Uh, I need to remove the entire skirt and take this up um, about what it, what you say that is like two centimeters. Uh, so I will do that. And also 
I need to figure out the buttonhole situation. I'm not sure if they ended up in the right place, which is a huge problem because they are cut. But in order to remove the lining, I had to severely cut these. So I need to redo them anyway. But I mean, look at the state of them, and they, they do need to be redone either way. And I've learned how to do them more properly since I did these. But first things first is to look how much horsehair canvas I need and then do redo the pad stitching uh, and remove the skirt. I'll probably remove the skirt first because then it's easier to work with. Hello and welcome to the very messy floor of my to-be sewing room. As you can see behind me, I have just piles and piles of fabric and stuff in a bed. That's because I have so much to like fix in the right order that I don't even know which start at this point. So we'll see when I can get that sorted. But I figured this is a good time to keep going with my winter coat because uh, it is fast approaching winter so I will need to get that done. So I went to the fabric store and I got some new lining fabric. This one. It's just a cotton fabric that's fairly sturdy uh, and fairly like... Um, I don't want to say glossy but it, it, it's... it's you won't... How do I explain this in English? I'm figuring that when I put my arms in my coat, I won't get stuck on this fabric. Let's see, where, where are we? So, what I started doing is, after figuring out all of the changes that I needed to do, I basically tore the entire jacket apart. So now we have pieces of a jacket, much like Bernadette did in her video. <laughs> Because you keep realizing that to do this you need to fix that first and to fix that you need to fix this. So yeah. But I did start by figuring out the pocket flaps again. Uh, this is a complete completed pocket flap. I just took off this old lining uh, and I added the new lining. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna cut out all of the pattern pieces of the horsehair covers um, and attach there. So this is the linen, it's very wobbly, as you can see it doesn't hold shape at all. And this is the horsehair canvas, which as you can see, less wobbly does hold shape much better. And this I've cut so that it's easy to fold along the body, but not this way. <coughs> I hope that's correct. I'm thinking that we want this to be able to curve around with this to be uh, able to give structure and then This here is the colour piece and I'm not entirely sure if I got the shape right because the linen was so bad but it's cut on the bias where it's, the other two are cut on the grain. And that is because this, we want this to be able to fold nicely along the colour. Um, so next step 
is simply to paste these in place, I think. I managed to F up my sewing room even worse because I was looking for one particular fabric and then I started sort of unpacking the fabric that I'm supposed to put in a shelf over there. But I haven't emptied the shelf because this is my old like childhood bedroom so it's sort of still filled with stuff. And so I put it on my sewing table and now it's chaos everywhere and I'm just like, oh, where do I even begin to pay for this? This here is the collar that I have pad stitched. If you are any good at pad stitching, you will notice instantly that I pad stitched it upside down. <laughs> but this here should have been here. And I'm de deliberating redoing it, but I don't think I will, because I think this will still be fine. I hope. Okay, so I pad stitched the lapel, and one thing that I note about myself and pad stitching is I'm not very good at it because I find it very difficult to pad stitch evenly. So if you look here, nice and small stitches, and then the further along here we go, they get wider and wider. And I swear I'm not doing that because I get lazy, but it's just, it starts to sort of skew and then I try to fix it by fixing the width at one place and then it just goes worse and worse and worse. Uh, it holds the shape that I wanted to, it fills the purpose so it's fine. So then I added this tape. This is the old tape that I used before. It's very wide and ideally I would have used this thinner tape all the way around because I think it's better but I don't have enough and I don't have enough money to buy more. So I will just use thinner tape here at the points and on the lapel and then here I used a thicker one from before. Then I also stitched down the uh, horsehair canvas to the darts uh, after basting the entire thing in place and just clipping it so it's a bit more correct because it was a bit wonky. So this is done on one of the sides and I'm going to repeat all of these steps on the other side and after that we're going to secure the facing and I had an idea with the facing you say I watched Downton Abbey and I noticed on one of the riding habits that Lady Mary has that she has um, velvet on her lapel not her lapel on her collar and I realized that I that looks rather lovely. So, I happen to have some black velvet and it looks nice against the green and I figured I want to add that to the lapels and to the collar because the collar is so small it will not be visible but the lapels are rather big so it will be a nice little touch of detail I think. Now for the last update, these are the buttons that I'm going to use. They are plastic so they are not historically accurate. They are sort of black and brownish and they go marvellously with this green and also with the velvet. So I think that will look really nice. I want to just point out that this, this is the old lining. Just look at how beat up this is already. Not sure if it catches on camera but it's really messed up like everywhere i wore this jacket maybe once maybe and now look at it this is where we're at uh, i have attached both of the front facings probably shouldn't have done that just yet i should have attached the collar first we'll get to that uh, and just just trying it on the dress form. I think it looks good. I am a bit worried about one of the sides flopping out when I try it on, but we'll see how that fits once everything is in place. The next step is to take the collar piece and attach that. That way or that way? Should be that way, I think. 
so like something like this and that's why we really shouldn't have attached the front facings yet but uh, I think it's okay <laughs> let's see Sorry about the camera phone quality video here, it's because it's my phone. <laughs> I have just a few like hours maybe to myself to sew, so I don't really want to spend that time waiting for my camera to load the battery, so that's why. Uh, I just realised that I wonder if I even read the instructions properly last time, because there are so many small steps that I missed. So one of them I'm doing right now, for instance, is I've pressed this seam, you can perhaps see it, and now I'm just whip stitching it, uh, the seam allowance down to the canvas. Uh, they say to stay stitch, um, no, no, they say to catch stitch, but I'm whip stitching. Um, I mean, I'm probably pretty sure there's a good reason to do the catch stitch, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> so, well, um, that's one of the small things that I have really missed, and I'm not sure why. Uh, I also noticed that last time I sewed this on upside down, so I've sort of tried cut here to get the curve that's naturally there if you sew it on the right way so that's also great so anyway i'm just doing the whip stitch to secure the seams so i did the thing i whip stitched down the entire length here and oh, wow what a difference that made especially here i'm not sure if you can see this is the center back and I remember this point being so bulky and I'm not sure if I forgot to press them like but, I mean I did press them last time too but stitching it down really reduced the bulk a lot so that's really good um, yeah I really should learn to read the instructions better so next up let's see so it's late ish i mean it's not really it's nine o'clock but i am so tired so i'm just gonna tell you guys what i'm up to before going to bed i'm finishing my little snack over there i've pinned the collar pieces right sides together and then i'm gonna do back stitches all the way around and then chop the corners fell down both sides, whip stitch in place, turn the collar right sides and then I'll see what to do next. But I have some, some back stitching to do here and as you can probably hear I am super tired and I'm not sure if I'm going to do it tonight. For some reason, <laughs> I did this dot after I had already basted the lining in place. I don't know why I didn't do that last time. I think it's because I read just baste the dart in place and for some reason my mind went, yep, we do that when we baste the rest in place. Obviously I probably should have basted it in place before, but I think this will work. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. It might not be as good looking, but it'll be fine. This edge, you just fold in and you whip stitch in place. 
don't know if you can see it, but that's what you do. The rest you don't fold in just yet because you will do that later, I think. Maybe you actually don't fold this in. She'll see. But after you've done that, you tack all the back uh, line. So this portion, portion right here, the back, you tack all the top, uh, the neck, and the shoulder seams. Again, you fold it in and you pin it in place as I have, and then you whip, whip stitch it down. I noticed when I pin this in place that one of the sides, no problems. Bit like a glove, and I was like, oh gee. The other side, the lining did not reach like the end, like it's supposed to. And I was just like, how, how is the lining uneven? I checked, no, it's not. So then I checked and I realized that, no, no, it's the shoulder seams of the wool was uneven. And somehow I didn't notice that before when I sewn it last time, I suppose. And that's great. So obviously I fixed that, I just opened up the seam a little and let it out to where it's supposed to be and now it should be fine. I have attached the lining to the back and it was fairly simple <laughs> once I finished fixing up the shoulder seam. So you just fold in and fell down the edges everywhere basically and the back goes on top of the sides. So <laughs> after I finished that I pinned on the skirt portion and if you remember in the beginning I thought that the skirt portion was hitting the seam was hitting a bit too low so it didn't fit me 100% so what I've done is I've pinned it in place a bit further up and we're gonna try it on so in order to do that we're gonna get rid of this uh, which I don't want to because it's so cold here and that's really good wear so what I'm wearing underneath is just what I normally would wear okay let's see seem to be behaving a lot better which is quite a relief I think they behave nicely uh, I'm trying to see in the viewfinder this is that something that's a bother or is it just for now I think it's fine yeah I think the lapels look really good <laughs> that's that's a relief. How does it look? I think it looks good. The wrinkle here. I think there's still a bit of a wrinkle here, but it's much better than what it was. I will go and have a look in the mirror just to make sure. But I think that we're gonna go ahead and stitch this in place. There's one issue with bracing the seam, and that is yeah, just one centimeter from the new seam, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, is the old buttonhole. I've been sort of trying to figure out what to do with it because if I raise the seam, which I will because it will fit so much better, that buttonhole is effectively not going to be usable, and I'm afraid that. Since there's weight pretty close to it, it will sort of be a weak point. So I need to sew that shut, I think, with like a nice strong stitch. But then, what do I do with buttonholes? We're gonna see it on the pattern where the buttonholes are supposed to be. And then I am thinking that I might be able to do it on the other side. So there will be buttons here and buttonholes here, because then it will close on top of the old buttonholes. I don't think you will notice them. So hopefully that will work. We're just gonna see where they will end up. But first let's stitch in the skirt portion.
bullshit. <laughs> um. Oh shit, oh shit. Whoa, the lighting is really bad here. I'm sorry about that. But I have fell down the lining, the skirt part of the lining, and um, attached it to the top and to the sides. Then I stopped about yay far from the bottom because this needs to be, you know, turned and fixed later. Um, I have also, I'm not sure if you can pick that up on camera, but I have also felt this side seams down to keep them from sort of falling outwards and the lining to show. Uh, I hope, in theory, that that will work, at least to fix the issue I have with the lining peeking through a little bit. So what I did then, uh, or what I have been doing, is I've let it hang on the mannequin for a few days just to make sure that uh, this doesn't stretch because it's partially on the bias. Uh, so that's why. And now what I'm doing is I've lined up the middle back, turning it in, pinning it in place and I'm going to fell this down and we'll see how this turns out. Okay, um, so we've finished the skirt, I just folded in the edges and I whip stitched it in place after letting it hang for a little while to make sure it stretches if, if it does stretch. I'm not sure with this fabric but I didn't want to risk it so I let it stretch. Uh, so the skirt part is done and now it's time to tackle the sleeves. And the sleeves, let me see, hang on, I'll put it down here. Yeah, you're welcome. The sleeves look like this. Uh, oh, shit. This is what the sleeves look like. You can see it's, it's one, one piece of sleeves with a bit of a bigger sleeve head so you can gather that up for a puff. It's not the size of the original sleeves. I have removed quite a bit. I'll show you a picture of what the sleeves should look like here. And then a picture of what the sleeves ended up looking like for me here. And you can see they drooped quite a bit and I didn't like that. I think it's because the fabric is just very heavy. And also I didn't have any sleeve support in, so that's that. So I, I reduced the sleeves. No, that's absolutely not it. Because this is quite a lot bigger. Then what did I use? Yes, yes, this is what I used. Okay. So apparently what I did last time, because I wanted to reduce the size of the sleeves, but I did still want some puff, I used the shirtwaist pattern for the sleeves. Uh, yeah. There is pattern, there is a pattern for smaller sleeves in the original uh, skirted um, jacket pattern for, for black nails also you can use. Uh, and in fact I think that's what I used for the original lining. But I do remember, pick you up. I do remember, I do remember, the lighting is really awful in here, I'm so sorry. For the original lining I think I used the original pattern for smaller sleeves um, because I wanted to reduce this and I had enough fabric to do it. Uh, but you can see the reason I didn't do it for the uh, outer portion of the jacket, the fabric fashion or the fashion fabric, is because it's a two-piece sleeve and I didn't have enough fabric to do that. However, I think it's more logical to just use the same pattern for both and I'm not sure why I didn't do that. So we're going to use this pattern, cut out two pieces, two sleeves and then try to set the sleeves back in. Uh, and I hate sleeves, I think we all hate sleeves, so we'll see how that goes. No! 
I don't mind the chaos I'm creating. Well, here we are. One sleeve is completely done and this is the inside of that sleeve and you can see I've just whip stitched this in place with fairly small stitches and I have sort of pleated uh, the uh, instead of gathering I've pleated the pleats in place sweet um, and I did the same for the outer part. I didn't gather it just because it's very bulky and I didn't like that. So I pleated it. It's not completely even, but I don't really care. And if we look down here, at the bottom, I have done the same thing. I've just folded it in and I have whip stitched it in place. However, I can already tell that this wants to go like that so I think I need to redo this and I'm not I think the reason why it does this here is because it's the top of the pleats like it if it would have stayed like poofy then this would stay like this but it doesn't need to stay poofy I'm not sure if I can explain this very well so that means there's a lot of extra fabric that you can sort of pull out uh, and I'm not sure how to fix it uh, so I think I'm gonna do the other side and I'll see if I just pull it down as much as I can fold it in and whip stitch in place I'll see what that does and if that's better I will redo this side it will not take that long so I have uh, a lot of pleating of sleeves and setting of sleeves to do and I hate that I think we all do um, for the placement of the pleats, I just sort of willy-nilly chose where to start and stop the pleats and then I just <laughs> did them by eye, hopefully in sort of a similar size. It's not perfect, but at this point I just want to be done with this, so I don't care. Yeah. The jacket is done. <laughs> I know there's been quite a skip between the last clip and now. It's just I realized it's very difficult for me to get any time to film because I guess I don't make enough time for me to film. But anyway, I thought we we're gonna go over the list I made of stuff I wanted to correct. And I have a <laughs> nice envelope here with a like memory notes for me to go through. And I figured we could just start from the top, see what I managed to fix, see what I didn't and why, and then give an overall opinion of what I think of the jacket now. So, let's start with the easy one, the lining. It's no longer broken. So that's good, and it also does not cover the buttons anymore. Let's put the jacket on. And let's keep talking. So I'm gonna look at my notes and we'll go through them one by one. Crooked closure and gaping closure. Yeah, if you remember here it was very weird because I put the buttonholes very far in so it would only, only, only so it would always gape and I don't know why I did that. I didn't think it through properly so what I did was I just moved the buttonholes to the other side and I have to cross it the opposite way that I used it which is weird but it will work uh, 
and I stitched up the old buttonholes. I will see if I can show you. So here, it's barely visible. But there's the old buttonhole. I do think that the buttons that I put on here are a bit uneven and I need to move them just a little bit. That's for later. So that's fixed. It's no longer gaping. Uh, it's still a little bit crooked because I misplaced or like I placed the buttons a bit incorrectly, but that's fine. So the next one is lapel not lying flat and it is. It's now lying flat. It's much better. It's less bulky, but it's more well behaved. If you see here, it still wants to sort of spring out a little, but not as badly as before, not even close as badly as before. And I think I would have needed to recut the entire um, collar to fix it properly, if I could even. It's, it's not distracting anymore, so I would consider it fixed, which is good. It was one of the main issues. Next up, bobbly hem. We no longer have a bobbly hem. I think it was because when I hemmed it last time, I accidentally caught too much of the outer fabric, and then when it hung, when it hung, yeah, when it hung, it stretched a little bit the lining compared to the uh, outer fabric, and it caused the bubbly nature of the thing. That's no longer an issue. Especially since I let both the lining and the outer fabric hang together for about a week before I finished it. Should have done that from the start. Next up, we have the waist and the wrinkling around the waist. I increased, or I, I raised the waistline quite a bit. I mean, my natural waist is all the way up here and I could not raise it that much. That would just not be plausible. The wrinkles are almost entirely gone, they are still there, but not as bad and I don't think it's distracting anymore. The skirt still hangs a bit funny. I think it is because of where the waistline hits, but mostly I think I just need more skirt. <laughs> I'm very very pear shaped and this is sort of more A-line, so I think what happens is that my hips just push out the skirt so much that it still causes just a bit of gaping in the front. I don't think there's anything I can do about that, it's just the way the pattern is. Uh, it does bother me, because uh, I think that's one of the things that just it makes it look unprofessional, uh, not well fitted. But I can't really do anything about it now, so I think I'll just have to live with it. So, overall thoughts. It's a lot better. It is wearable. It's, it's, it is wearable. I mean, the lapel and the sleeves, love. Very happy with how that, that turned out. The fit around the waist and the skirt, it is bothersome, but I cannot do anything about it. And time will tell if it will be bothersome enough for me to stop wearing it or if I will just deal with it. I think, I hope I'll just deal with it. Because I think it's just me noticing it, not everyone else, possibly. Final, final thoughts. Would recommend doing this. Sometimes we just learn stuff and we get better at our craft and just taking the time to see if we can fix previous issues Absolutely worth it because this is wool. <laughs> it's good material I don't want it to just hang in the wardrobe and never been used now. It will get used it, it absolutely will I have no other winter jacket, so it, it needs to be used so <laughs> There's that anyway if you like this video subscribe, give us a like and all of that jazz and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm on my tippy toe tippy toe I filmed all of that on my tippy toes because I am not a smart person. I could have just lowered the camera. Did not do that. Well. <laughs>